So you finally decide to go for the Comtech Security Plus certification and good for you because it is easily one of the best certifications you can go for, especially if you're just starting out in your cybersecurity career. But how exactly would you prepare for the exam? How best would it be for you to approach the exam and ensure that you actually get the certification? So in this video, I'm going to give you seven practical tips on how to prepare and pass the exam. Half of the tips will involve the actual exam itself, what to look for in the questions, how to answer the questions, things like that. And then the other half will involve the actual preparation, what you should be doing in your daily routine in order to prepare well for the exam. So let's not waste any time. Let's jump right in. The very first tip here is going to involve the actual questions themselves. See, the Computer Security Plus exam consists of 90 questions and you're going to have 90 minutes to answer them. So mathematically, this will equate to one minute for each question. However, this will be the very wrong assumption because not all questions are formatted in the exact same way. What I mean here is that you actually have three different types of formats of questions that will be asked. You're going to have the classic multiple choice question format where you'll be asked a question. They will give you four or five options. You have to choose the best option, but then you're also going to have the fill in the blanks format where they might give you a couple of sentences with gaps or blanks in them. And then on the side, you will have the answers. So you'll have to actually have to drag the right answer to the uh, gap to answer those kinds of questions. And then you're going to have the performance based questions, which are basically simulations in here. They could give you like a virtual network of an organization. You will have a couple of routers, firewalls, workstations, and then they will say something like, Hey, uh, step one, configure the firewall on the second floor so that traffic from point A doesn't get to point B. And then step two, do this on workstation A. And then, you know, step three, do this and do that. So understand that for the drag and drop, and especially the performance based questions, you're probably going to spend more than one minute on these types of questions, especially for the performance based, you might be looking at two minutes, maybe even three minutes. However, the good news here is that typically, the drag and drop and the performance based question formats typically carry more weight. So while your multiple choice questions would be probably one point for each one of them, the performance based and the drag and drop could be three points, four points, maybe even five or six points. With that being said, what you want to do here is this for the multiple choice questions, try to answer them in no more than 45 seconds. Okay. Spend typically to like 30 seconds to maybe 45 seconds. So this will give you enough time to actually spend up to two minutes, maybe even three minutes for the performance based questions. Okay. Think about it. If you're able to save anywhere between 30 to 15 seconds for each one of the multiple choice questions, which actually the majority of the questions, you will have enough time to invest properly in answering the drag and drop and the performance based questions. Now, speaking of the performance based questions, a lot of students typically get very intimidated because they see the simulation and now they've been asked to do this and do that. It's not the easy multiple choice where all they have to do is just to choose the right answer. So I've had a lot of students complain that they get intimidated. They feel a lot of pressure. They don't know how to respond. And that's a shame because the performance based questions, the simulations, they're actually quite easy to pass. And the reason is because you will be given clear instructions on what to do. They will tell you step one, do this step two, do this step three, do that. So what I would recommend here is this, do not panic when you see the similar simulation question come up on your screen, take your time, relax, read the instructions and then do them. One thing I will highly recommend is that before the exam, try to answer as many of these kinds of questions on your free time so that you'll get used to the format. So that when you actually come across those questions in the real exam, you will no longer feel intimidated. You will not feel pressured. You will be able to answer them with plenty of confidence. And remember once again, that the performance based questions typically carry a lot more weight than your multiple choice questions. So they are very, very important. Take your time to answer them as well as you can. Now, speaking of the multiple choice questions, you need to pay very close attention to how they are being asked. Typically the kinds of adjectives that are being used. What I mean here is that they might give you a question where 
out of the four options, all four of them are actually correct, but you've been asked to choose the best option out of those four. So a lot of students, they typically rush, they read the question, they miss the fact that they've been asked to choose the most likely or the most correct of the four options. They look at the options, they see option A and option A is the right answer. They choose option A, but then they miss the fact that they've been asked to choose the best option when the best option wasn't option A, it was actually option B. So pay very close attention to those kinds of questions. They will say something like choose the most likely, choose the least likely, choose the best option in here, choose the most correct option, choose the most prudent option. Look for those kinds of adjectives, pay close attention to them because in that kind of scenario, all the options you've been given are probably correct, but you have to take your time, think and choose the most correct out of those options. Now let's move on to how you'd actually prepare for the exam itself. The first thing I want to talk about here is going to be establishing a routine. You need a routine whenever you're preparing for this exam or in fact any kind of exam. Do not make any drastic changes to your life when you are preparing for the exam. What I mean here is that do not move to a new city or move to a new apartment or switch jobs or you know get yourself into a relationship with a boy or a girl or whatever. You do not want to make such drastic changes in your life while you're preparing for the exam because you don't want anything to distract you. So you want to have a routine. You know that, okay, I'm going to wake up 6 a.m. in the morning. I'm maybe going to go to work work all day. When I come back at 5 p.m., I'm going to spend an hour to maybe relax. And then 6 p.m., I'm going to pick up my book and start preparing for the exam. You want to have that kind of routine. Routine is going to be extremely important for you to be able to prepare well for this exam. Now, if you do have to make drastic changes to your life or your life routine, try to make them as far away as possible from the day that you plan to take the exam. Because trust me, when you make drastic changes, when you change apartments, when you move to a new city, you get yourself a boyfriend or you get yourself a girlfriend, you're gonna have all these distractions and that will obviously distract you from preparing well for the exam. So establish a routine and stick to that routine. Now the next tip here is gonna be for you if you're the kind of person who goes to work every single day, maybe Monday to Friday, but you have to commute to your place of work. So maybe you take the bus, you take a train, maybe you take a taxi. While you are on the move, try to be learning. It could be that you've printed out maybe like the study guide or maybe section one or section two. You could read that while you are on the move. And maybe you have audio clips as well. You could, you know, put them on your phone, put on your earphones, Listen to them while you are on the move. The point I'm trying to make here is that try to utilize as much free time as you have as possible to prepare for the exam. Now, if you're somebody who drives, you have your own car, you drive to your place of work, good for you. You can also get the audio clips as well. You can convert books into audio formats using AI or whatever tools are out there. You can get them onto a disc, put them in your uh, CD player in your car or any other means of playing the audio files, you can do so and then listen to them while you are on the move. The point I'm trying to make here is that try to utilize as much free time as you have as possible in order to prepare for the exam. Now, when it comes to actually preparing for the exam itself, I cannot give you very specific tips because how we learn for or how we prepare for an exam is entirely subjective. You could be the kind of student who learns best by watching videos, or maybe you prefer reading a textbook. It all depends. Maybe you love, you love to use flashcards. Whatever it is, whatever system that you have used in the past that has helped you, because I'm pretty sure at this point, you've taken exams in the past before, you know yourself better than anyone else. All I will say is stick to the system that works best for you. If you like using flashcards, keep using them. If you prefer watching video lessons or you prefer reading books, by all means, stick to that system. Now is not the time to be experimenting with a new way of preparing for an exam. Now, the final tip I want to give you here is going to involve choosing the right date to sit for the exam. Now, I've had students, even before they start preparing for the exam, 
they buy the exam voucher and they choose the date for the exam, let's say two months from now. And their point here is that, oh, now that they've actually bought the exam and they've chosen the date, they know they have a deadline, now they have to prepare, no more excuses. I personally feel that this is a terrible way of approaching the exam. You do not want to do this because even though I understand, I get the whole idea of giving yourself a deadline and then, you know, that will motivate you to actually learn and prepare for the exam. You do not know what might happen tomorrow. God forbid, maybe you might fall sick or maybe a loved one might need your attention or maybe you may have to move to a different city or maybe... Again, you don't know. Maybe you might get fired from your place of work or you never really know with life. Life happens when you least expect it. And when things like this happen and you know you spend all this money buying the voucher for the exam and you know you, you, know you have to take the exam in a few weeks, you're going to be under a lot of pressure and you do not need that. So here's what I would recommend, okay? Before you buy the voucher for the exam, make sure you have finished reading all the material from step one all the way to the very, very final step. And maybe you've attempted a few mock exams and you've done relatively well. That's when you should now buy the voucher for the exam. And you can choose to write the exam two to three weeks from that point on. The remaining two to three weeks to the exam, you can use that time to revise what you've learned take as many mock exams as possible, and then you're gonna feel a lot more confident. So please do not make the mistake of buying the voucher and choosing the date for the exam even before you've began preparing. That is a terrible way to approach it. And just before I go, final, final bonus tip. This is gonna involve something which people don't really talk about that much. And it might seem kind of weird and out of place, but I'm gonna say it all the same, sleep. Sleep is extremely important, especially if you're somebody who walks every day. Now, I know going to walk at 8 a.m., 9 a.m., coming back at 5 p.m., 6 p.m., it's tough, I know. And then you have to, like, you know, sit down and then prepare for the exam. I know it can be tough. What I will say here is this. There will be times when you just don't feel like studying. You pick up the book, you're watching the videos online, but nothing is sticking in. At that point, do not push yourself. Take a break. Go play some video games or watch some TV or go do something else, okay? In fact, go and sleep. If, if you're dead tired, it's late at night, go and sleep. Do not force yourself to keep studying. I understand, like, you know, you want to be like, you know, be, be mentally tough and, you know, struggle and persevere. I get that. But trust me, when your body is telling you that, look, you have to sleep, it is time to sleep. Get as much sleep as you can. The more refreshed your brain is, the better you'll be able to prepare for the exam, the better you'll be able to assimilate, the better you'll be able to learn. I'm not a sleep doctor by any means, but I do know the importance of sleep and I do hope that you will take this tip uh, into consideration as well. So that's it, my tips on how best to prepare for the CompTIA Security Plus exam. And if, by the way, you're interested in preparing for the exam, I do have my study guides. I have a full course on Udemy, on PACT, on my own private platform, labsaber.com. I will have all the links down below if you're interested in preparing for the exam with me as your personal uh, guide and tutor for the exam. My name is Alex. It's been a pleasure. If you're new here to the channel, if this is the first time, welcome to Lab Cyber. I talk about cybersecurity stuff. So if you're interested in content like this, be sure to subscribe, hit the bell so you're notified whenever I upload a new video. If you have any questions, comments, of course, put them down in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer them as soon as I can. Stay safe out there and I wish you all the very best in your preparation for the Computer Security Plus exam. Cheers.